What's up everyone, Dapblade here with another Hunter's Guide to Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. In this video, I'm going to be bringing you the must-have dual blades in the game. Now when it comes to Monster Hunter Rise, some weapons shine more than others. And when I mean weapons, I mean weapons within each weapon category, as every weapon is viable in the game. But when it comes to crafting specifics of a certain weapon category, there are some that you may want to focus on over others. And so, that is what these videos are all about, giving you my suggestions on the weapons you should craft. Now when it comes to the dual blades, they do benefit more from elements and ailments, thanks to their fast long combos, but they can use raw attack weapons. So first let's get into the raw attack dual blades I'd recommend. To be honest, when it comes to raw attack, there are two that I would focus on. First of all would be the Lucent Nagakuga dual blades, the Alcald's Asterism. These dual blades have a raw attack of 330 with purple sharpness, a poison rating of 10, zero affinity and defense bonus, with a tier 4 and tier 2 decoration slot. They also have a tier 1 rampage decoration slot, but this can be upgraded if you wish. But these give you decent raw attack, nice sharpness, decoration slots, and the poison rating is an added bonus. However, if you want an alternative for raw attack, I'd recommend going for the Scorn of Magda Marlow weapons, the Blue Blazed Blades. These have a raw attack of 320 with nice purple sharpness, they have a decent blast rating of 36 with no element and defense bonus. You'll also have a tier 3 and tier 2 decoration slot and a tier 2 rampage decoration slot. Now even though these two weapons are not pure raw attack weapons, as in they only have raw attack on them, when it comes to the dual blades having those extra ailments is actually welcome. But like I said they both give you decent sharpness, raw attack and decoration slots for your builds. There are some dual blades out there that have higher raw attack but the cons in regards to its negative affinity or sharpness issues is not worth it in my opinion. But anyway, let's move on to the next section where we talk about the elemental dual blades. Now when it comes to the elemental dual blades, I tend to look for a balance between high elemental value, decoration slots, and at least white to purple sharpness. Now for the fire element, I'd recommend going for the magma drum dual blades, the magma shredders. These have a raw attack of 300, a massive chunk of white sharpness, which potentially can get to purple if you craft this right, but to be honest, Having this much white sharpness normally means that you don't have to worry about sharpness skills on your build. You have a massive fire attack of 64 with no affinity and defense bonus. You have a tier 3 decoration slot and a tier 3 rampage decoration slot. As always when it comes to elemental builds, having a rampage decoration slot at tier 3 means that we can use elemental bane which means that it frees up having to upgrade that rampage decoration slot via curious crafting. Anyway, next up for water, I'd recommend the Almadron Dual Blades, the Mud Shredders. These are very similar to the Magma Shredders, as they have a raw attack of 300, massive white sharpness, which can potentially get to purple. You also have a water rating of 62, with no affinity and defense bonus. You have a tier 2 and a tier 1 decoration slot, and you'll have a tier 3 rampage decoration slot again. Now, when it comes to the Thunder element, there are two options. You can either go for the Nawa Dual Blades, the Double Discharge, which has a 300 raw attack rating you have a sliver of purple sharpness but a decent chunk of white sharpness you have 69 thunder rating with no affinity and defense bonus and you'll have a tier 2 decoration slot but if you need a little bit more flexibility in your build i'd also recommend the zanoga dual blades the oppressor's miracle these have a raw attack of 310 with again purple sharpness and a decent chunk of white sharpness you'll have 54 thunder rating which is slightly lower than the nawa dual blades you'll have again no affinity and defense bonus but you have a tier 2 decoration slot and a tier 2 rampage decoration slot. They also could be slightly easier to craft as well if you're going through the game for the first time, so they could be an alternative if you wish. Anyway, let's move on to the ice weapons, and again there are two options for the ice element. First of all, I'd recommend the Aurora Camp for dual blades, the glistening snow claws. These have a raw attack of 300 with a decent chunk of white sharpness. They have 64 ice rating with zero defense and affinity bonus. You have two tier 1 decoration slots and a tier 2 rampage decoration slot. Although alternatively, you can also use the Kushala Daora dual blades, known as Daora's Ventus. These have a raw attack of 310, with a sliver of purple sharpness and a decent chunk of white sharpness. They have an ice rating of 54, with no affinity and defense bonus. They have a tier 2 decoration slot and a tier 3 rampage decoration slot. And then finally is Dragon. To which I'd recommend either the Valstrax Dual Blades, the Crimson Twin Wing, which has a raw attack of 330 with massive white sharpness, you have a dragon rating of 52 with no affinity and defense bonus, you also have a tier 2 decoration slot 
and a tier 2 rampage decoration slot. Although alternatively, you can also go for the primordial Malzenu, dual blades to silver slicers, to have a raw attack of 310 with purple sharpness. You also have a dragon rating of 40, which is slightly lower, but this is made up for by the fact that you have so many decoration slots. You also have no affinity and defense bonus, and you'll have three tier 4 decoration slots and a tier 3 rampage decoration slot. So if you need a little bit more flexibility in your build, the silver slices may be ones to consider. But the dual blades shouldn't be discounted for when it comes to ailments. So these are some suggestions if you're looking for blast, poison, sleep or paralysis weapons. First of all, for when it comes to poison, I recommend the Camellios dual blades. These have a raw attack of 310 with purple sharpness. They have a poison rating of 47 with no affinity and defense bonus. You'll have a tier 3 tier 2 and tier 1 decoration slots and you'll have a tier 2 rampage decoration slot. I'm going to skip over blast because in all honesty if you wanted to go with the blast element I'd recommend the scorned magna malo dual blades again which we talked about in the raw attack dual blade section. If you wanted paralysis unfortunately there's not a lot of good paralysis dual blades out there but the jelly tree could provide you a decent paralysis build. It gives you a raw attack of 300 with white sharpness, a paralysis rating of 21 with no defense and affinity bonus. You have a tier 2 decoration slot and a tier 1 decoration slot and a tier 2 rampage decoration slot. But if you wanted to sleep, I'd recommend going for the Somnicanth Dual Blades, the Nightmare Thrilled Claws. These have a raw attack of 330 with white sharpness. You have a sleep rating of 24 with no affinity and defense bonus. Again, these also have a tier 2 and tier 1 decoration slots, and they have a tier 2 rampage decoration slot. And finally, if you're looking for something fun, then I'd also recommend the Antique Machina Dual Blades. These have a raw attack of 310 with purple sharpness, they have a blast rating of 25 and a poison rating of 25. They have no affinity and defense bonus, and they have a tier 3 rampage decoration slot. So these are a fun set of dual blades that could lead to potentially fun builds. So yeah, those are all the dual blades I'd recommend adding to your arsenal. Like I said, most of the time the dual blades do benefit more from using elements and ailments, and these are my personal favorite dual blades when it comes to using elements and ailments, and hell, even raw attack. But remember, no matter what weapon you can craft, as long as it's its highest tier, it can potentially do everything in the game. You don't have to take my suggestions as the only way to play Monster Hunter. So, I wish you luck in your hunts, and until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you the must-have dual blades in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.